Okay, this video is going to show how to save changes made in Argui. Argui is the graphical user interface for RetroArch. So when you're playing a game using RetroArch front end and you make changes, configuration, tweaks, how to get that to save. So RetroPy fires that up again. It's a bit more of an advanced video. It's not going to be useful for everyone, but if you're making particular config changes in RetroArch, then I'll try to show how it saves and how to change those saves so it does remember what's happening and try to do it in the cleanest way as well because there's, there's different ways of going about it but basically if we go and use a RetroArch based front end uh, game a lib retro system so we go into Mega Drive and I'm going to fire up something the Hedgehog and that's going to kick in Pika Drive which is um, lib retro which in turn is run by RetroArch so it fires up and let's say for whatever reason you want to make a change in our GUI and you do that by holding down your hotkey and select and holding down X or tapping X and you get the screen up and I'm going to go in there press X I'm going to change a random setting like uh, we go in settings oh I'm using RetroPie 3 RC1 in case you want to get exactly the same menu structure but the principle will hold for any other RetroPie 3 type settings uh, go in settings, uh, maybe I want to change video setting, um, maybe rotation. Maybe I want to go in and say, I don't like playing it the right way up, I'll play it 90 degrees, uh, like that. So I've selected 90 degrees, I'll press B to go back, and B to go back again, and then you go into quick menu and press resume content to go back. Now it's running, and that's possibly the worst setting to change ever. I can't imagine that many people are going to play like this. But you can see that um, it's now tweaked at 90 degrees. Now if I quit the game and hold down select to press start, it'll go back to emulation station and I can restart that. Now if I restart that, I'm not expecting that to have remembered the 90 degrees. There we go, we're the right way up again. And mainly the reason for that is because we didn't save the change. So if I go into that menu again, you can see down here, save new config. So I should really have done that um, before I made that change. Now, what we're going to do for a couple of reasons is I'm going to save the config as it is now. So if you like a clean config and you'll see at the bottom of the screen, some yellow text pop up and it'll show you the full path where it's writing that. And it'll be uh, OPT, RetroPie, Configs, Mega Drive, and then it'll say something like libretro or pikadrive.cfg. So I press the config now just so I've got a reference of um, what it's saving. And we'll look at the back end of this in a minute and I'll show you what's happening. So press save now. There we go, uh, pikadrive libretro. So it's done that. Now I'm going to go in here and go back to settings, go to video, and make that same change. Um, what was it? Rotation. 90 degrees, back out of that with B, and now I've got that that setting saved. You can see that the configuration is referring to that one we just saved. But now I'm going to save a new config with this change in. So the first one we did was like a clean or vanilla one. Now I've made one change that I wanted, um, and I'm going to save it again. So press save new config, and it used the same file name with a hyphen one at the end. So it's created a whole new config file with this extra change in it. So I press save. There you go. So it's same deal, minus one at the end, hyphen one. Now I'm going to go back to the game just for the hell of it and say um, quick menu, resume content. There we go. It's continuing on the side. And I've got those two sort of save files. I did press save content and that's fine if you want to play like that. So um, I finished the game. I'm going to go quickly back to that retroarch menu and you can just see um, I'll press B to get back to the main one and you can see that the configuration that's now hyphen one which is where we saved the um, change to this now if I quit out of this with start and select I'm going to go back in to the same game again there we go and it should be completely back to normal it won't have remembered any of those changes there we go we're the right way up again <coughs> excuse me okay so now if I go to the RetroArch menu again, hold down select, tap X, uh, you can see it's gone back to the normal settings. Now what we're going to do is go and have a look at the back end of this and I'll show you what's happened and how to get it to remember that. OK, 
Okay, so we'll go to a okay. terminal. Here we are in the uh, terminal view. You can do this either by pressing F4 on your um, Pi or just getting a remote session in. As this is an advanced-ish video, um, I'm not going to bang on about how to do all that and um, access it. So now we're going to change directory to uh, apt retropy. We're getting that directory where we save the files, which is here. And you'll put a view there. So we can see that we've got um, the two files that we just created. We've got Pika Drive Lib Retro and Pika Drive Lib Retro hyphen one. Now, when Emulation Station runs a RetroArch based file, um, how far back is it worth going? We'll skip that. But so, Emulation Station will, the first thing, one of the early things it'll do is look in emulators.cfg. So, we'll have a quick look at emulators there. And you can see the default is Pika Drive. Therefore, it's running this line here. To do that, it's running RetroArch. Then it's passing, uh, if I get back here, two secs. It's running RetroArch, and then it's saying, I want to run the Pika Drive Lib Retro call, which is here. So it runs that, uh, passes that to RetroArch. Then it says, after that, I'm going to read configs Mega Drive RetroArch.cfg, and then pass it the ROM. So if I quit out of that, the first thing it does after that is read this file. It doesn't read your configuration file you just created. No matter how many times you save it or use it here, it will reread this. Now, if we read the RetroArch file, you can see it's got you know not an awful lot of text in there. This is just for the custom Mega Drive section, obviously. And the one thing it does do is pull in another config file, which is apt retropipe configs all RetroArch CFG. And again, that's not this file or this file. And if we look at the all file, which is here, um, you've got, uh, this is in the all configs directory. So this is the file that's run for all of the systems because it's pulled in in that include that we saw. Um, you've got you know, various settings here that are run for every system. And none of these are going to reference those config files that you just created either. So again, um, it's not going to kick in. So if we go back here, um, back to the Mega Drive folder, you can see that oh, you can see that um, because the emulators runs RetroArch, you could change the emulators to specify running this, or you could simply get rid of that RetroArch file and rename this ret uh, retroarch.cfg uh, or rather because we made the change in this file that you, you'd rename this file uh, retroarch.cfg and it would fire up and it, it would save your change it would have it in there but that's for a few reasons not a fantastic idea because if you rename that to be retroarch.cfg for a start it won't have the include line in to go and look at the all retroarch cfg and in turn that all retro CFG is the one that tells the system where your um, auto controller files are. So it won't find your controller in the same way. Therefore, it might not find the hotkeys in the same way. Um, let's have a quick look at that file. If we edit it, um, as it is. Now, it saved all of your retroarch.cfg files. So it's a hell of a lot of settings, which is a bit of a nightmare to maintain because it's you just don't need all of these and this is on a per system basis so look at all these controls it's got for the player one in there um, hang on a minute, let's go back there I think it had bah, 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 bah. shader and reset reset button null I'm just gonna have a quick look in here for the hotkey see if it's remembered the right hotkey see it's got hotkey null but hotkey button is null and that should really be the select one so you'd want to change all this it's basically just complicates matters but saying that it would largely work as long as you've got your controller file set correctly in here um, let me just go to the top here which is control Y I'm uh, just looking for files uh, basically it's, it's a bit of a nightmare to maintain with your tweaks because this is a system only one and it's got all of the settings in so you're kind of ignoring the fact that you've got a retro arch or if you see what I mean so in summary oh no it does have the joypad auto config so it would find your um, joypad um, because it's got the path there but then further down if we go scroll down it's got um, 
all the key buttons again there on top. I'm just looking, and it's got all the more button here that could conflict. It's just not a great way of doing it, and it, it effectively breaks the way that RetroPie links all the files. So, a quick and easy way is simply save the configuration file that you wrote from RetroArch to be RetroArch.cfg and it'll fire up. But there is a much cleaner way which um, I'd recommend you do. It only takes about five minutes and it's a lot easier to keep an eye on custom uh, per system changes. So let's have a look at doing that. Now, just thinking of the best way of getting to, basically you want these files on your desktop. I always use FTP, but you could probably do it with um, a shared, just quickly check, hang on, bear with me. Okay, so configs is shared, you, so we could grab the files out this way. Um, I've just gone into Windows, gone slash slash retropy forward slash configs, and I know it's in the Mega Drive section. And there's the two files, and I'm going to drag those to my desktop. Um, obviously, you, you probably might want to do that with FTP instead, in which case, fine, drag those out. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to change the way we're capturing the screen a second. I can work that one out. There we go, you should be able to see the whole screen. Now, if I go to a web browser, Go to a website called Diff Checker. Basically, we're going to check the difference between those two files. Because if you remember, we did one with no changes in at all, so like a vanilla file, and one with the change. And um, there's different ways to compare files. You could do it manually if you want, but that could take ages. Or you could use this Beyond Compare, but that's um, pay software. There's probably other websites that do it as well, but this one is um, as good as any. So what I'm going to do is copy the text in here from the original and the change one over here. So go back to the files. Here's the two files that we created. Um, first one and one with hyphen one. So this is the original one. Open that up. Control A to select it all. Control C to copy it. Go to the website. Control V to paste it in. There's my original one, which is a hell of a lot of lines. Um, go back to the files. Open up the edited one. Control A to select it all. Control C. Go back um, to website. Control V. There. I've got my original and I've got my tweak press find difference and it says here I've got one removal one addition and because these are just um, white and the same it means there's no change but if I get this scroll bar and scroll down there we can see that's removed that's changed Let's see what else there is scroll 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 nothing that's it so the only difference between the two files are this so you can see the change you made is simply this video rotation is one so now I know that that might be the setting I want. If I copy that and I go back to, uh, let's go back to RetroPie. Bear with me and we'll see if we can zoom in on that. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the RetroArch file. Well, I'll just list it again for clarity. You can see RetroArch now. That's output 48k's worth of data, and there's only one line in there that we care about that's actually deviated from the standard. So now we can edit RetroArch, and I can say, um, I'm going to press enter a couple of times, because typically when you change a RetroArch setting in a system-specific RetroArch.cfg, you need it above the include file, so you set it before the all RetroArch gets a chance to do anything. Um, because I only want to change it on this system, so I'm putting it above. That's why I'm putting it at the top of the file. And I'll right mouse there. Okay, that was a bad example. But, um, I'm just going to jump back to that window, ignore that. That's probably weird. Right. There, video rotation equals one. Now I'll save that. Control X. Do I want to save? Yes. Let's quit. Now we'll go back to, um, we'll go back to RetroArch. Um, on the screen and we'll take a look and see what that's done so quit that bit okay we're back in uh, emulation station and I'm going to go to Mega Drive again and I'm going to fire up Sonic the Hedgehog now we've got that change in that system specific retroarch.cfg that one single line press A and we'll see how Sonic starts up there we go, just remember the setting it's got the 
rotation and it's done that for me and we haven't had to heavily bodge any configuration files we've just ripped out the single setting we want put it in there and it's quite happy to remember it so hopefully this will show you that um, it can be quick and easy to maintain quite a tidy configuration set of files and still make the changes that you want in our GUI to make it so you can it's easy to change in that nice graphical interface um, but whilst it writes the config file out a little bit differently you can still quite happily rip the setting out of that without too much bother and um, run with it and it's better than taking that shortcut of just renaming the retroarch to be retroarch.cfg because it keeps everything in the same sort of structure uh, if you've got any questions, um, please post on the forums um, where it's a lot easier to reply to more detailed queries. Uh, if there's any comments about the video, um, uh, please do post them up and I'll get back to you. And if it's been helpful, please hit the thumbs up. Thanks very much.